Well, uh, hello and welcome to this exclusive Future of Mining 365 webcast brought to you by miningjournal.com and miningmagazine.com. I'm Richard Roberts, the group editor of Mining Journal and Mining Magazine, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you today and to welcome Andy Sales, who's the Managing Director of AML 3D. Andy, thanks for talking with our Future of Mining channel. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Adelaide, uh, South Australia-based AML 3D is a, is a real innovator and disruptor in the rapidly expanding 3D metal additive manufacturing market, uh, with, with which some forecasts have more than tripling in size from the current 10 billion a year in the next four to five years. Uh, the company was established back in 2014 and listed on the Australian Securities Exchange last year. Uh, it has a current market value of about 55 million Australian Andy Sales uh, created AML 3D and, as, as I mentioned, is now leading the public company. He's a chartered engineer with master's level science and engineering qualifications who has held management and senior leadership positions in energy, mining and manufacturing over a career spanning three decades. Andy, the, the business focus over the past six years or so has been commercialising AML 3D's unique wire additive manufacturing or WAM technology, uh, which enables cost-effective large-scale production of metal components and structures. Tell us more about WAM, uh, what it's currently being used for. I, I noted a, a, a press statement released earlier this year that, that talked about a, a 1,400 kilo uh, Panama chock in Singapore um, that was independently validated as, as one and a half times stronger than cask versions of, of, of the chalk that are standard in the marine industry. But, but what's it currently being used for and, and, and why it changes the metal fabrication discussion? Yeah, good, good question. And again, thanks for the opportunity um, uh, to explain what AML3D is focused on. I guess overall, we're sort of focused on being a major player in the Industry 4.0 advanced manufacturing space, which includes 3D printing. And obviously it all disrupts uh, current metal fabrication processes such as forged and, and casting uh, and billet machined uh, type components. Um, there is quite a cost advantage to some of these uh, opportunities using the process. Uh, where we fit in, in amongst our peers and, and other processes, other 3D printing processes, is that we focus on medium to large components. And in, in that actually gives quite a compelling sort of cost advantage, lead time advantage for, uh, uh, you know, the mining industry in particular, uh, uh, and not only that, but potentially aerospace, uh, uh, marine, uh, which we're heavily focused on as well. And, and other major uh, major industries. So what our process is based on, the core technology, the patented technology is, um, is based on wire arc additive manufacturing, which was sort of born out of Cranfield University in the mid to late uh, 90s uh, through the 2000s. There was um, a lot of research done and research backed by the aerospace industry focused on predominantly titanium materials. Um, there's, a, there's a very intense cost uh, effective solution for aerospace when it comes to titanium because of the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the special metal being, uh, you know, incredibly strong, but sort of weight saving, uh, but also uh, the fact that it is very, uh, uh, very, Prohibitive for manufacturing uh, processes, it, it costs quite a lot of money to uh, to produce something the traditional way. So, this is where they focused on uh, the overall driver, business driver was uh, uh, it was cost, uh, saving time, saving lead time, and having those units uh, or those production units. Uh, potentially in the factories of these large, uh, these large uh, uh, aerospace manufacturers. So, and and, and look overall, that, um, that that's very much the same here at AML. Um, the synopsis here for the business drivers as well. Um, the opportunity for us um, 
uh, was identified that there's a lot of other materials out there which also have opportunity for cost reduction and uh, for disrupting that, that traditional supply chain. Um, and, and mining is definitely, uh, uh, you know, where we're focused uh, at the moment and, and where it can be quite beneficial. Um, I guess getting to the actual process and the description of it is that it's basically uh, uh, based on uh, a well-known welding science method of, of uh, uh, gas metal arc welding. It's, it's wire that's fed through uh, a, a roller system, which is, is delivered in an inert at atmosphere uh, to the source of the actual layering. Uh, the layering techniques are then uh, enhanced by our own proprietary software. Um, and we have uh, bespoke uh, techniques for, for controlling uh, the bead sides, the layering uh, techniques, and the, uh, the, the predominant um, uh, strength uh, properties of the material uh, which is produced. So that, that's our, that, that, that in a sense is our IP. Um, we're not inhibitive in, in the sense that we have any restrictions in build size um, within reason. Um, there, there may be very large items that we can do, but we would need to build special architecture for that, but it is, uh, it is, it is possible. And getting to the uh, a good example uh, is the Panama chop that we actually produced for marine, marine application um, uh, about a year ago um, for a customer up in Singapore. Um, their interest laid in uh, or, or, or lied in the fact that these components normally take, uh, you know, many months to procure to the site, to the construction site of the, of the vessel that may be being uh, built. Um, they wanted to see if there was benefit in, uh, in the process uh, being brought in-house to manufacture at the source of need, rather than relying on that supply chain. Um, but what it allowed us to do as well was to showcase the technology in the sense that it, it was a clear disruptor against cast, uh, uh, cast items, cast components. Uh, which this Panama chalk is traditionally made out of. Um, um, uh, Panama chalks are generally made out of cast steel, which is generally reasonably porous um, and also has low strength value. So by choosing a, uh, a, a good um, uh, high strength or medium to high strength, I should say, uh, feedstock, uh, we, we conveyed the, uh, or we presented the opportunity for reducing that, um, uh, reducing the strength, oh, sorry, reducing the, uh, the cost through enhanced strength um, by using that particular uh, uh, grade of feedstock. So uh, we ended up with values of about one and a half times to two times the the traditional method of cast, casting the, the, the product itself. So that's something that that customer is actually looking at, into quite seriously. Um, obviously the, uh, the opportunities for cost reduction in lead times and, and the increase in strength, hence the opportunity to reduce the overall weight and redesign is quite compelling for them. Uh, all large companies, though, they do take time to make decisions. So I can say that as well. But, um, but it's a, it is a really good demonstrator, actually, leading into what we can offer for mining uh, components and the potential for that, um, because it's very similar materials that were used for the Panama chop that can be used for mining as well, and high wear rate uh, parts, which typically get replaced a lot um, out in the mining industry. Fortunately, I did work in the mining industry going about, back about 20, 25 years ago. So I do have a little bit of an idea of what we can do for them. So, um, and hence, you know, we've had engagement from 
through our relationship with the Additive Now uh, venture that we're in at the moment, um, through them and connections into uh, uh, the, the, the Warley based um, uh, customers, uh, mining customers through them. So. Yeah, I'll talk to you a bit, 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 bit more about Wally in a minute. Um, you, you just mentioned your, your uh, proprietary software, your, your process, uh, which involves your your, your Archimy uh, model and, and, and the WAM software has received that ISO 9001 quality management certification. W what's the significance of that for the business going forward? That, that's a bit different in your space, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it's probably twofold in a way. One, uh, back in our early days, you know, we, re we were fortunately the recipient of an accelerated commercialisation grant from the federal government here in Australia. And um, and part of our milestones for that, that we preset was to achieve accreditation for the business and the process. So we achieved that through ISO 9001 um, and, and the Lloyd's Register certification, which gave us good segue into that credit or that certification of parts for customers so i guess i can probably touch on a bit of my background uh, in, over the last few years in uh, quality engineering welding engineering and that, that quality management area where you know uh, a lot of the big primes you know you 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 you're, uh, you want to be assured that uh, service goods or products that you're buying from your downstream suppliers are uh, to a certain to a certain quality to a certain requirement do they meet uh, global standards for the process or the component itself and you incorporate that into the design of your product um, um, so uh, uh, the significance is um, in, in accreditation of the process is is, uh, is very significant in the sense that it gives customers who approach us in wanting to learn or engage in the process itself and finding out how it can be cost beneficial to them. I think that's a very big step um, um, uh, that's taken place up front, um, knowing that we've got our accredited process, knowing that we've got procedures in place that, that, that goes a long way to giving them the assurance that they, they're getting a good quality product. Okay, I, I think this, um, this quote comes from your latest annual report. Um, and it, it says that traditional fabrication has served industry well for, for hundreds of years. However, today society is rightfully demanding business operate sustainably and with a smaller environmental footprint. I mean, how radically does, does WAM and, and AML3D's proposition change that conventional picture of production, speed, pricing, waste, uh, and how readily accepting of, the, of this new way are end-use industries such as mining, which we've talked about a little bit? Yeah, it's an interesting uh, question and it's an interesting uh, uh, story for 3D printing uh, 3D printing industry at the moment. Um, uh, you know, all sorts of processes are out there regarding regarded as 3D printing processes, and uh, what it does come down to is uh, is the accreditation side of things to give the the the, the general user community uh, the assurance that uh, that 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 this is real and and it can be used, and there are real cost benefits there. Um, I guess in terms of disrupting that, that traditional supply chain, I guess going back to the Panama chalk is a, is a classic uh, sort of case, demonstrated case where, um, you know, including footprints, carbon emissions and that sort of thing. Uh, traditionally, uh, you know, that part would be made uh, in a casting shop, which uh, used an incredible amount of energy to melt uh, to melt uh, the actual uh, molten steel to be able to pour that into one shape at any one time. So um, in terms of carbon footprint um, and environmental uh, uh, benefits, um, it, it's just not comparable. It's quite astonishing when you compare the numbers that we, our own process uh, uh, 
emits in terms of electricity use and that sort of thing, um, uh, it, it just doesn't compare at all. It's not even a blip on the radar. Um, I guess I can give an example of um, the fact that we're situated in South Australia. We're, we're, we seem to be well known for um, you know high energy, uh, high energy uh, uh, pricing here, um, and in fact that was one of the one of the key questions in the early days for us is that um, you know have you considered that? And um, and yes, we had uh, because we use robotics and we use uh, uh, low emission power sources for our welding units. Um, they don't draw a lot of energy, so we don't actually need a lot of power to actually run them. Um, and, and the very fact that layer by layer, uh, uh, we're building layer by layer, um, uh, just sort of enhances the fact that we can, uh, you know, build like for like and, and, and better some of the, 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 the steel properties out there compared to these uh, traditional casting and forging shops. So just drilling into the environmental implications a little bit more. So where does this fit within strategies uh, in mining and other industries, uh, strategies that are aimed at holistically tackling supply chain carbon emissions and, and, and altering company carbon footprints um, beyond their core operations, mm. i.e. in the case of mining beyond the mine gate? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the opportunity and certainly where, uh, you know, it aligns with our business strategy of uh, uh, offering our, our units, our proprietary uh, 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 software and our proprietary Archimy system uh, to out to some of the supply chain and to bring that, uh, potentially uh, uh, bring that, uh, those systems um, uh, into the pro into their own processes under their own roofs and and some and and, and in a way replace to a certain extent uh, uh, that that more traditional supply chain. Um, I guess our our, our uh, we envisage that over the next few years um, that a lot more fabric not only fabrication companies but um, but traditional casting uh, companies will start and look at this a lot more seriously due to the very fact that, uh, you know, there's carbon emission, uh, 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 you know, aims and, 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 and goals to reduce that globally. Uh, and they'll only look at these, uh, these new techniques the tell us a bit more about the significance of the additive now uh, joint venture that you mentioned earlier with Ad advisee and uh, digital which is part of whirly and, and aurora mm. labs i hope i got the pronunciation mm. of that advisor correctly but uh, yep. so how, how does that play out from here so out of now uh, uh, a, a joint uh, entity with uh, Worley and aurora labs um, the engagement that we have with that now is is heavily on the Worley side of the uh, of the business. Uh, the Worley connections into you know the, all, all of their assets and the engineering that they do globally, um, and uh, some of the replacement uh, components that uh, uh, that they need to source for for those entities and and those processing plants. Um, is there's a there's a heavy uh, uh, focus on uh, on providing additive uh, additively manufactured parts um, in quick time in in uh, to reduce sorry in, to reduce lead times and and costs so they have got a, a big focus on that um, uh, Worley I guess has quite a reach globally. Um, so additive now, uh, as a, as an entity owned by uh, by Worley, has uh, been tasked with uh, rolling that uh, that opportunity out for some of these larger larger corporations. 
Okay, so a lot of milestones for the business in a in a fairly short time since you since you listed on the ASX last mm. year. What what about just to finally a comment on the outlook for business this year and, and some of the key drivers of potentially conducive uh, tailwinds that are emerging in the market and and I guess uh, you know is, is COVID a, a factor in that outlook? I guess uh, uh, to address the latter, you know, COVID, uh, we, we've uh, we've certainly um, uh, been fortunate in South Australia here um, not to be too affected. Um, I guess when you talk about global supply chain and our interest globally, um, it has actually produced a uh, a few opportunities in terms of uh, uh, you know we had situations where some of the casting uh, and forging uh, uh, shops in, in Eastern Europe had closed down um, and some of them remain closed. Um, and due to components being made in those production lines, they've stopped and now uh, some of those uh, customers are now looking for alternative uh, ways of not only sourcing their, uh, their, their, their components, but also uh, also, uh, new ways of manufacturing them, and that and that segues in really well with uh, some of the global standards that are being developed at the moment and coming on board and uh, and being approved. The British Standards Institute just recently uh, fast tracked three new standards which actually cover our process. So, um, um, I guess getting back to the growth focus for us. Um, we're focused on uh, all markets this year, but we have brought in uh, a pretty uh, intense marketing uh, uh, scope this year with focus on predominantly uh, mining and marine um, and reaching out into Asia, strengthening that and making sure that, uh, uh, you know, we're capturing uh, uh, those new uh, customers that are looking for these new uh, these new opportunities, these new ways of uh, manufacturing. Um, that's probably our main focus this year. Our other focus is uh, uh, this year is trying to expand on our uh, on our growth in Adelaide here, giving capability to our our contract manufacturing side of the business through vol volumetric uh, sales, increasing that volume. Um, and also looking at new opportunities, uh, um, which may include uh, looking at uh, acquisitions of supply chain and that sort of thing. So, um, uh, and, and last of all, our, our main, uh, one of our main focuses also is on, on our own IP, um, as in uh, expanding on that with some of the techniques that we've got and some of the new materials that we are able to um, uh, create and, and, and therefore enhance uh, those, those strength properties for, uh, for the end user, for customers. Okay, great. Thanks, Andy. Uh, on, on what I've read and, and certainly what I've heard, it's an incredible story. And I've, I've got to say, as an Aussie who's seen a number of small manufacturing tech and service companies become world leaders over the past few decades, uh, you know, I've got a really good feeling about what you're doing uh, and, and where yep. this one's heading. Mm -hmm. Andy Sales, thanks again for making the time uh, to talk with the future of Mining 365 and, and best of luck for 2021 and beyond. Yeah, thanks very much and thanks a lot for your time.